Okay, in this session what we're going to have a look at is something called a two-dimensional array, the beginning of our multi-dimensional arrays. And once you've got the two and you've got the idea of one, you can go to three and four and so on. Uh, there's no limit to that as such. Um, this is the dimensioning of a two-dimensional array. And quite simply, like a one-dimensional array, it has a value in brackets, but it has two sets. The reason why we sometimes term it as a two-dimensional array is let's have a look at what we originally looked at. We had an array originally called stranname and it had a value of stranname 4 and that meant that VB created four boxes to store the value into. When you do a two-dimensional array it creates a 2 by 2 in this case because I've asked it to do 2 comma 2 but it could be 2 comma 8 or 8 comma 2 or whatever values you want it doesn't make any difference or it doesn't so you can easily make a two-dimensional and three-dimensional adds other bits and pieces this is not a great analogy to stick in your mind and always think oh all arrays are a shape and space exercise from your maths classes they're really not and this is not a great way of remembering them uh, except that it works for 1, 2 and even to a certain extent um, to 3. Uh, so this is not a bad way of looking at it for our exercise but do be aware that it can't apply and once you get to 4 and 5 it's impossible we can't think in those dimensions and we're not talking about shape and space. So what are we actually looking at in our program? Let's have a look at our program. So we've called dimension the array here we've got another uh, string there we've got two counters in count one in count two which we use we define as integer and I've got a boolean here called boolean block um, boolean is simply a value but value that is either true or false nothing else and it's fantastic to use as a flag uh, imagine that a flags lying down and when there's a problem it pops up and that's your true or your false or whatever else so you can define and use these booleans just to simply notify you that something's right or wrong or something's happened or whatever else I then define my variables. Now it's really important to do this, particularly with strings and especially with booleans, because you need to know what your boolean is starting with. Because boolean has only two states, potentially it could start in the true state or a false. Set it to what you know it you need it to be in its initial state. And we set our string here to absolutely nothing. We then come to here and we got a for next loop, but we've actually got a for next loop inside a for next loop, and this is called a nested loop. You can actually do nesting with if statements and all kinds of things, but this is a nested loop. Right, we've got a counter here for a next, and we've got another counter in here, and quite simply, this first counter waits when it's triggered it fires this second counter as well and that second counter has got to complete before it will run this first counter so it will simply go around this sequence and then go through here so it do int count 1 is equal to 1 then it comes to here and say int count 2 is equal to 1 run this bit of code then go int count 2 is equal to 2 run this code then drop out the loop and say oh, ok int count 1 is now 2 int count 2 is now oh 1 run through the code and so on What's it doing? It's going to give us a bit of text and then it's going to ask us to type something in and we type that in and whatever we type in is going to be stored in our array and it's going to use one of the four locations available using our counter in count one and in count two so that's why I'm using this counter to shift between the boxes so it will do that one then that one then that one then that one I then reset my counters and I reset them because I need to know where the system is going to start um, and that's really important. 1-1 one, one tells me that my system is going to start here and what we're going to do is create a simple circular footpath so from there we can walk to there, to there, to there and to there simple circular very boring footpath so we then come to this part and this is a do until and we've got a really good long do until set there we're using everything we've looked at before here the first thing it does is write to the screen our first array and it's taking our strand 1 comma 1 we know it's 1 comma 1 because we set it up here so whatever I typed in here is going to be shown here so then going to ask us which path and I say we're doing a, a path you can walk around so it's going to wait for the key press and it's going to be looking for north south west or east N S W E in capitals if it gets anything else it's simply going to say you have not moved. Then we've got a series of if statements here. These four if statements are looking for a specific condition. I'm stuck walking around here. 
but there's nothing stopping the user potentially from going outside our box. There's lots of places they could move to. So what our system does is when they go out the box, it pushes them back in. Doesn't matter where you go, it pushes you back in. Um, that actually also then sets the flag to true. Remember the flag I set to false? Well, it would now be set to true. And its Boolean block would be set to true. Down here, this final if statement is then saying if it's true, so if they've stepped outside the box, tell them. That way is blocked. Then set the flag back to false. Go back around and let the person make a new choice. Let's see how that actually runs. Okay, so here's the first part. Asks us to enter it. We're starting into one top uh, one comma one. So there is a path to the south and east. And one comma two. So this is the one to well as you're looking at the screen it's to the right of the first box. So there is a path, it's still at the top, so there's a path to the south, but there's the path we've just come from in the east, which is the west. We're now at two comma one, so we're actually underneath the first box we started, so there is a path to the north, which would take it to the first box, and there is one to the east. And then finally the last box there is a path to the north and west. Press enter and the first thing it does is it reads from 1 comma 1 that was our first reference up here there is a path to the south and east and we have a choice let's go south. And now it's gone south, and I typed in capital S, so it's made int count 1, added 1 to that. So int count 1 was 1, it's added 1, made it 2, and it's assigned that to int count 1. So when it comes all the way back round and down here, and it comes back round, it's actually 2 comma 1. So it's now put us at the box lower down. We're now here. We've gone from there to there. So... It's now asking us which path. Let's see if we can go south again. That's going to take us outside the box. No. We've gone south, so int count 1 became plus 1. So int count 1 was 2. It's now 3. Assign that to int count 1. Comes down to here and says, is int count 1 bigger than 3? Or bigger than 2? Yes, it's 3. So make int count 1 equal to, take it back, and then set the flag. It's come down to here. If the flag is set to true, then write that way is blocked. Reset the flag, go back round and show us where we still are. Let's say we go to the east, but I'm going to put lowercase east. I've put a lowercase e, there is no lowercase e. A capital E and a lowercase e, if, as far as a computer is, con is concerned, are completely different. The, a capital and lowercase e are as different from each other as an uppercase e and the letter A, the number 9. They are completely and utterly different. So the system has come down, it says, nope, not north, no, not s, not w, not e. So case house, you have not moved. Let's now exit. How do we exit? Well, actually, the system for the do until is looking for the word exit. So that's all we have to do is type in the word exit. When we do so, it will still run through the code. It will sh quickly go, you have not moved, and then run through all the if statements and drop out the loop, and the game will end. And there it is. So, in that small program, we've seen how to use a two-dimensional array. We've got two variables, in count one, in count two. We've used the for next nested loops. We've got a do until. We've got a select case and a series of ifs. And we've used the boolean as a flag. We've covered quite a lot there. I hope that's been useful.